Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Harris and today I'm talking to author Roy Taylor. His novel, African Sunsets, A Settler's Story, is a book formulated from many actual experiences encountered by his family in Africa. Today we'll be talking in depth about the characters and storyline. Hi Roy and thank you for coming back to talk to me on Book Talk Radio Club. Hello Claire. Very, very thankful in, in, in looking forward to talking with you. Thank you. The story is based upon a young couple, Malcolm and Liz. Malcolm has a dream to complete his brewing studies in Edinburgh at Harriet Watts University, then immediately emigrate to Kenya in East Africa, a colony ruled by the crown under His Majesty King George V. A relationship is forged between Malcolm and Liz while both were working during summer retreat at a very prestigious golf course in the middle of Scotland. They grow very close and eventually a love-struck Liz decides to join her newfound acquaintance on his adventure to Africa. So Roy, can you paint a picture of Kenya under the rule of King George V? It must be vastly different to the Kenya we know about in the 21st century. Oh, I, I'm sure today we have no comparison per se to what the early settlers experienced going out there. In those days, there was um, probably no no buildings, no 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 major structure. Maybe a little um, from the British already building this necessary stuff. But Kenya is a um, an enchanting place uh, for those that have never been there. There's a uh, there's an aura of uh, excitement, adventure. Um, a wonderful place to actually live in or to even visit. And uh, I have to say that uh, I've got nothing but wonderful memories of such a wonderful place. So how were the British treated at that time by the Kenyans? Maybe it, maybe the operative question is how were the Africans treated? Yeah, um, sure. Be, sure. <laughs> no, just being funny. Um, the, the British... Um, created their own um i'm going to call it monster but they were tough they they ruled tough and um and controlled the the environment and the population in a fairly um uh, disciplined fashion mm. the goal obviously was to take the country over and to 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 some degree pillage the the mineral resources and so on from the land and yeah. also to to take the land so it was you know very tough let's go on to the two main characters starting with malcolm walker we introduced to him in chapter 1 which is titled the meeting in which he makes his way through the pouring rainwashed streets of edinburgh in his 1920 Wolsey hardtop Whilst he drives with very little visibility through his windscreen, he's thinking this is the worst storm he has ever been in and his longing, how he's longing to get back to Kenya. Tell us about Malcolm. I mean, we know from your description that he is a huge framed man at six or four and weighs 225 pounds. Well, what character does he have? Is he kind? Is he gentle? Or is he tough and uncompromising? Marek, Malcolm was a driven human being. He was a man with extremely um strong strong opinions he was a man with with um, a very strong character nobody mistook malcolm when he was in the room and <laughs> um he lived to his um sizable frame he, everybody respected him and um and he was destined for success right from the beginning and why is malcolm studying brewing and why at the heriot's what in, in edinburgh what drew him to that particular degree well, he grew up in an environment in Lancashire where his relatives owned the brewery in Lancashire and um, and he got the desire to follow in their footsteps, per se, but do it his own way. Mm. Being such a strong character, he decided he needed to do it somewhere else completely and um, he chose the uh, primitive location of Kenya as it was at that time and started the first brewery out in that area. And now, Liz, let's go on to Liz. We know she's from Lancashire as well, but tell us a bit about her background. What does she look like? What is her character? Liz is a a, a little powerhouse. She's a very <laughs> prim, small woman, very petite, jet black hair, and a character the size of Malcolm. She was just an incredible woman. <laughs> and um, everyone who met her 
absolutely loved her for her extremely beautiful character, but her strong personality. And um, I guess that's why the two of them got got so uh, attached that mm. there was a an attraction from two strong characters and it worked right from the beginning the story takes Malcolm and Liz through their journey to their new homeland and as the south takes on new horizons they face unbelievable challenges in the harsh but beautiful environment of Kenya without giving them too much away of course what kind of challenges do they face they face challenges that people um, in today's world here don't even get close to experiencing. Okay. Um, getting off the boat uh, when they did, they got into a, an environment that was um, very uh, colonial in, in, in style. The, the the British military were present in, in most of the areas. The the African population was existent um, as... Um, as they um, went about their their days. But basically, when these guys landed in Kenya, the first things that they encountered was the wildlife. And and the wildlife became part of their life completely throughout the the story. And um, I recount a lot of those from my own experiences as a boy. But, um, but, to be truthful, they were real stories and um, real experiences, which would make your hair stand on end if you <laughs> had to live it today. But um, but truthfully, it was a, 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 a huge, huge encounter for them. And, and I think they even went maybe to some degree with their eyes not quite as wide open as it needed to be to face it. But they it were sounds- tough people and they didn't give up. Well, let's find a little bit about you now, Roy Taylor. The book is based upon many experiences from your past and your family's rich heritage in Kenya and is dedicated to your cousin Jeffrey, with whom you grew up. Would you like to share a little bit of your childhood in Kenya with the listeners? My um, life in Kenya was a um, was a, a rare, special treat. I have to look at it as an adult looking back that mm. I had a very rare childhood and I'm, I'm, I feel so privileged to have had it. Yeah. Um, but alongside that was the reality of where we lived. And um, I, I can tell you truthfully that though most nights I, I would have um, horror um, dreams of, of snakes and things climbing all over me and things oh, like dear. that because it was an everyday experience sure. to live there and come across snakes mm. and um, the, we had hyenas outside in the yard at night we had uh, lions even um, we had every kind of wild animal you can imagine in Africa pretty much was somewhere in the vicinity of where we lived that's and so amazing. I was uh, I was allowed a great deal of freedom as a boy. Mm. I was allowed to 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 um you know go into the the wilderness per se uh, mm. under under severe regulations from my parents but uh, a lot of times they didn't know I was I was mm. in the hands of our African uh, house boy's wife and she yeah. would t- she was called a bb and she would take care of supervising and she'd give me a lot of freedom so <laughs> i had a i had a, a great deal of freedom but i learned as a second nature mm. that you do not put your foot forward of the other one without at least looking to see where you're treading <laughs> and uh, like it, it was quite an experience so i'll tell you a little bit of a funny one when i came to america i was expecting the same kind of experience and so my family thought i was completely nuts every time we'd go camping because i'd be on their case looking out for snakes and things and of course <laughs> it, there there are snakes but in our part of the world they're they're not as plentiful as one would imagine so that's just, that sixth sense you develop stays with you sure. forever Absolutely. So after meeting your wife and starting a family, you became a very successful estate agent. At one time, owning an agency with your brother in the west of Cornwall. One day, you got your hands on a copy of the Los Angeles Times Sunday edition. In it was a story about a lady who had become a realtor in L.A. and had become a million dollar club member in just six months. What happened next, Roy? Tell us what you did. Well, my brother and I were very successful selling homes in England, and mm. um, 
I sold a lot of houses the year before I left. And when we came here, the reason we came here was this this story about this lady that you alluded to. And I misinterpreted it as that she'd made a million dollars. And in fact, uh, she'd sold a million dollars worth of, of real estate in terms of value rather than commissions. Still, it was not a bad mistake to make. Mm. We emigrated. We made some very clear-cut decisions on what we were going to do. And one of them was that after getting to America, I was going to sell real estate again. And um, if after two years living here, um, we decided, either of us, that we didn't want to stay here, we would Mm. go back to England. Anyway, uh, that conversation never really took place. And... (laughs) In my first three months of living in California in those days, I made three years of English commission. Wow. So it was a very successful move, um, more so than we ever dreamt. And so when people talk about the streets paved with gold, Mm. in a way it was. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you've been living in the USA since 1978. Have you been back to England? Is there anything you really miss? Kind of a strange one. I... I, um, I didn't go back for 17 years after we came oh, here. Wow. Right. Not not because I didn't care about my family that I'd left. It was more that work was so busy. Yeah. I really couldn't take the time out to to take that much time off to go on holiday. And so for the first 17 years of living here I worked 7 days a week and I I, I was striving for success. Yeah. And then after that I I kind of came to the reality that this is not good you've got to put your priorities right and I started mm-hmm. to visit England and I came back about every three years after that right, right. but um, no it is there was, anything a, it you was a long gap is there anything hmm? you miss from the UK I'm sorry is there anything you miss from the UK you haven't got in California oh I'll tell you what I what I, I miss is England is a place that, um, and I'm going to say the UK because that's fairer. Um, mm-hmm. The UK is a wonderful, wonderful environment to visit. It's a place where you get to feel the history that we don't have in America. Mm-hmm. It's a place where there's a, a safety factor that you you never forget. You live, you go visit somebody down at the pub, or and it's mm-hmm. it's a very beautiful environment. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I wouldn't go back is because I am spoiled with the weather, spoiled yeah. with a lifestyle that is a lot different. And we've become Americanized, if the truth is known. And um, <laughs> that's the way it is. Well, if it works for you, that's great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I guess that's the truth of it. But I wouldn't hesitate to go back any time. Back to African sunsets now, a settled story. When did you decide to write the book and how long does it take to write? I always wanted to write a book. Uh, I wrote one before this one. I won't go into that, but I wrote one before this, which I published. Mm. Then I then I made a decision that I wanted to write a serious novel of some sort. Mm. And I, I was crossing the idea of doing a uh, autobiography of all my experiences in Africa and so on. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that. I think I'd rather turn it into a, a more uh, exciting saga of... Um, of, of uh, flowering it up a little in different places but overall with a basis of truth Mm. and so uh, I chose to write the novel and use my story but change the names of all the people involved and uh, use all the experiences that we had in the story itself because they were exciting in themselves and didn't Mm. need really a lot of flowering but it took me about um, just over 12 months to write it Mm. And I started to write it uh, actually quite a while ways back in uh, several, quite a few years ago now. But mm. I did that because um, it was a uh, it was a sort of done on the side while I worked, and so mm-hmm. uh, I, I. But I had so much fun writing it. Every time I'd sit down, I tried to make the goal of writing a whole chapter and do mm. it. And um, that has been an enormously um, in, uh, energizing and and exciting thing for me. And I I love writing, so we have uh, gone from there. And uh, I started to market it, and uh, mm. unfortunately we hit COVID, and COVID yeah. kind of blew, blew it out for a while. I but, bet. 
back on the track. We're pushing now and it's reaching <laughs> and getting wonderful reviews. Are you self-published or traditionally published? And what made you go that route? I'm self-published yeah. uh, with Amazon. And um, I, I never really went to publishers to do it. I'm, I'm one of those... Um, free-spirited people i do everything for myself mm. <laughs> and everything on on my own kind of and mm. spent my whole life doing it in every aspect of my life and i thought you know what i'll publish my own book and market it myself and um and to be honest with you i i published it through amazon and um that's been the way it's been there was not really um any any sort of controversial decision of why i just did mm. it yeah, I, I know, because when I published my two books, which was back in 2015 and 2016, I wanted control of how, to, how I was going to publish my books. So like you, I did self-publishing as well. Yeah, I understand that totally. A good decision. You've got complete ownership and control exactly. of it. And any time exactly. you want to move around with it, you can do that. Yeah. And I love doing that. I mean, I haven't yet, but I suspect... Once I get into a more of a laid back mode and, and, you know, do more of this, I will probably do that. I'll jump ship and, and take it a different route to, to promote the thing. I see you already receiving some great feedback, Roy, including what an exciting read. Having never been to Africa, I enjoyed the adventure. Interesting to learn about the original settlers and with their daily interaction with wildlife. I was moved by this story. Mr. Roy Taylor, next series, please. Talking of which, will we meet Malcolm and Liz again, Roy, in another story? And if so, when? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, in the first book, I cut it off pretty briefly at the end because the plan was to carry on. And I'm halfway through the next one and uh, enjoying every minute of it. But the character of the book is is changing slightly because the history is changing slightly out there. Mm. And um uh, for anybody who, who just has a, a, a whim to to take on adventure, this book will fill every one of your your dreams and desires of what it's like to go to a strange and distant place and mm. and and lay your roots. Um, there's a lot involved with it, but I'll tell you what, um, very exciting. And and the second book is exciting for me at the moment. I I have been. Um, it's a little slower building it because I just wanted to make sure that it has has all the factual content it needs and still the same adventure that that we put into a novel and um, okay. the, uh, the the ratings have been excitingly good. I've good. not really had a had a <laughs> probably say this and somebody will do it, but but I haven't had a bad review. That's and I'm very thrilled about that because it tells me that those that read it really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, and I want to continue doing that for people. It's just a fun, passionately enjoyable experience for me. That's brilliant. I mean, I I, I think you said you, Book Talk Radio Club's listeners can purchase um, African Sunset on Amazon. I'm sorry, Claire. Could you just say that one more time? Yes, so the book can be bought on Amazon, yes? Yes, 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 yes. Um, it's on Amazon.com and um, very easy to find. Just punch in that title with the settler story to go with it because there's quite a few different African books out there these days, but um, none like this. You'll enjoy <laughs> it, and I promise you, you'll be very happy reading it. All right, well, thank you, Roy. That was great. Good luck for the future, and thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Lovely to speak to you, Roy. Thank you for your time and I appreciate it. No problem.